Turner called about an hour ago. She's worried about you because you haven't been in touch for such a long time. Did she say that? Yes. She said she needs to speak to you urgently. Do you mind if I use your phone? No need. I asked her to come out here and join me. She should be arriving any minute now. How long will the translation take? Oh, not long, I hope. The book will be a great help. You'd better just wait here for a moment. I'll just take a look around then, if you don't mind. Of course not. Be my guest. Mr. Halligan, there you are. I've been looking everywhere for you. I'm touched at your concern. Now, don't go imagining things. After all that's happened, it's only natural that I should be worried about you. And Mr. Blake. Well, you've found me now. How did you get on? Any news? Mr. Blake's busy translating the parchment we found. He thinks the amulet and the parchment are somehow connected. Maybe we'll be able to stop the druids once we know what the parchment says. How are you getting on with your translation, Mr. Blake? I've done about half. Just be patient a little longer. Well, I had to get Mr. Blake this book. That took rather a long time. I've been phoning around asking for you. You've been trying to get hold of me? Yes. I also went to Scotland Yard and spoke to your chief. He's a bit cross with you. Cross with me? Why, what have I done now? Lord Sinclair's planning to bring charges against you for burglary. What? I don't believe it. That old devil Sinclair seems to feel he's pretty safe, doesn't he? It looks that way. It seems he has very influential friends in the police force. Whatever, your chief asked me to tell you that you're suspended, effective immediately. Oh, and the next time you come to the office, he expects you to give him a comprehensive report in writing. What? He can't be serious. Don't tell me he's handing the case back to that thick-headed, big-mouth Lowry. I wouldn't know. All he said was that he expects you to hand the file to him as soon as you get back to the yard. I certainly will not. This business is just too important to let go. I don't care what the chief says. I'm going to carry this case through on my own. What, what's going on out there? What is it? What's happening? Leave me! Get out of the danger zone! Here, take the parchment and go! Come along, Mr. Blake. Let's get out of here! You get out of here. I'll follow you. Get out of here! Quickly, run! I believe you have something of mine, Mr. Hannigan. I shall give you until sunset to give my property back to me. Blake! I have to go back and get him out of there. Are you crazy? Don't go. It's pointless. You can't help him anymore. He's dead. Yeah, you're right. Oh my God, what an inferno. Let's get out of here, Melanie. Otherwise, we'll be next. Where can we go? To Scotland Yard? No, that's not a good idea. The chief inspector's waiting for me there. We'd only lose time. And Sinclair is getting more and more powerful with each new murder. So what can we do? You heard what Mr. Blake said. Sinclair has the power to complete the ritual. No matter what we do, for the time being, nobody can stop him. Then we're lost. No, Melanie. We have one chance left. What do you mean? We have to go to Twelve Bridges. We have to try to move the Gate of the Worlds. If we want to stop Sinclair, we have to stop those who gave him his power a thousand years ago. You believe in that Gate of the Worlds thing? It's just a myth, a fairy tale. The question is not whether I believe in it, Melanie. 
The question is whether we have any other options. You're right. Come on, then. This place is just incredible. Yes. It's beautiful. But also rather ramshackle, just like Mr. Blake told us. Could I ask you something personal? That depends on just how personal it is, Brent. Why did you phone Mr. Blake? You know why. I wanted to talk to you because of the business with the Chief. But at Mr. Blake's you said that you were worried. Well, yes. I hadn't heard from you for a while. And after all we'd gone through together, I wasn't indifferent to what happened to you. That's nice of you. You know, I'm not really used to anybody caring about me apart from myself. And apart from Chief Inspector Miller, of course. But he's only worried whether I'm doing something which could harm his beloved department. It's all right, Brent. You, you're a nice man. Strange, but nice. What did you think of me when I first came to your museum? What did I think? Brent, do I really have to tell you? Of course you don't have to, but I'd like to know. I'll tell you, but only if you promise not to be angry with me. Oh, God, is it that bad? Well, do you promise? OK, I promise. I thought, this unshaven bloke's wearing a totally unfashionable coat. What? That's what you thought? Yes. And was that all you thought? You ask a lot of questions, Brent. I think that's enough for a start. Perhaps we can chat a bit more later. Now we've got other problems as well, don't you think? Sure. More than enough, I would say. We will find a way of getting over that. I hope so, Brent. Melanie? Brent? It's about that conversation we had. What is it, Brent? More questions? You're really curious. Could I ask you something? That Are you married? Oh, well, um... Was that too private a question? Yes. No. Oh, I don't know. 
You don't have to answer. It's all right, Brent. I was married. I got married as soon as I was 18, you know. My father dragged one of his younger colleagues round to our house every weekend. A real high flyer with money, an expensive car and a golf club membership. He was called Peter. And you married him? Yes, my father did everything he could to bring us together. I was young.